Hello, everyone. Um, this is 16.1, a model for reaction rates by Chem with me. Okay, so first off, we'll begin with the definition. Uh, the reaction rate of a chemical reaction is stated as the change in concentration of reaction or a product per unit of time. It is determined experimentally. So if a question comes which states... Uh, how do scientists discover the rate of reaction and uh, know that it's discovered experimentally? Or if it comes up as a true or false question, know that they are in fact um, determined exp uh, experimentally. The brackets beside reactants stand for the concentration, which comes to you in molars, which is the capital M, or mole per liter, but it's mostly considered, it's mostly written as uh, molars, which is the capital M. Uh, know that your answer will always, always be positive, with, and your answer is written in molars per second, which again is the capital M, or mole per, uh, mole uh, liters times seconds. Um, if they ask you why is it negative, say that because reactants decrease during a reaction, um, the delta, which means that you minus the final from the initial, will become negative because the final amount of reactants will always be less than the initial amount of reactants. Um, yeah, that's the answer for why you have to put it in negative. If uh, your they only give you a pro the products. Do not put it in negative. The negative is just for reactants. Okay, so in a reaction, the rate decreases over time. The reactants decrease because they're used up, and the product increases because all the reactants are made into products. If they ask you why the rate decreases, it's because the reactants decrease. There are less reactants to work with, and that's why the reaction isn't as fast over time. Okay, so for a reaction to happen, you need three things. Collisions, the correct orientation, and enough energy, which is also known as activation energy. Uh, the activation energy must be met, by the way. Uh, the collision theory states that atoms, ions, and molecules must collide in order to, to react. And it is used to explain the rate of reactions. So if it states, like, just memorize this in case it ask, asks you what the collision theory is. Um, yeah, it just states that they must collide. And the more they collide, the faster the reaction is. So st stuff like temperature or surface area or these factors that raise the uh, that raise the rate do this by causing more react uh, more collisions. And this is lesson sixteen point two, which I will explain after this lesson. Okay, so the reactants must collide in the correct orientation to form an activated complex, which is a temporary unstable arrangement of atoms in which old bonds are breaking and new bonds are forming, which is also known as the transition state. It doesn't always lead to products. What this means is that in order for reactants to break and new products to form, they must collide. And when they collide, they have to be in the correct orientation to break apart into the correct pieces. So the, the carbon, which is the black dot, has to hit the other, other um, reactant with the red dot, as well, it has to hit in that order to break apart into the correct, uh, to, into the correct molecules. So, 
yeah, it has to have a specific order to form. They stick together for one, like less than one second, and then they break apart. And they have to hit, hit each other in the correct orientation so they can break apart uh, in the correct orientation as well, or the correct products. So, yeah, A hit red with red, which makes it uh, incorrect. So it rebounds, nothing happens. And in B, it also hits in the incorrect orientation, which again makes it rebounds and no products are formed. But in C, it hits in the correct orientation, which makes them break apart uh, into products. But in D, it does hit in the correct orientation, but it has not enough energy, such as we mentioned, uh, which is a factor needed for a reaction to happen that we mentioned in the previous slide. Reactants must have enough energy to form the activated complex. The minimum amount of energy that reacting particles must have to form the activated complex and lead to a reaction is called the activation energy. High activation energy means that react the reaction rate is slow. Think of the activation energy as a slide. Um, there are less steps in an exothermic reaction to reach the top of the slide. So you don't get as tired and you go down really quickly. You climb up and go down really quickly. But in an endothermic reaction, you have more steps to climb, which takes a lot, a lot, a lot of time. So it's slower than an exothermic reaction. You need more energy to reach the top. But in an exothermic reaction, which has less stairs, you reach the top very quickly because there are not as much stairs. Think of, it, think of it like that. So that's why an exothermic reaction needs less energy to reach the activation energy. The activation energy is how much energy there is needed for it to happen. So that means you don't need much energy so it will happen very quickly but in an endothermic reaction you need a lot of energy for it to work which means it will go slower because you need a lot of energy to reach the top of the slide yeah so think of it that like that but always know and keep in mind that activation energy and the reaction rate are indirectly proportional the higher the activation energy the slower the reaction rate and i think that's it yeah thank you for joining me today and i hope 